What's up everybody? In this video, we're going to take this photo and specifically the eyes and we are going to turn the eyes from this a little bit dark, a little bit lifeless to this. They have a little bit more depth and dimension to them. My name is Matt Glaskowski and eyes are, are such an important part of the photo that sometimes some subtle changes that we can do can make all the difference. And this is going to happen a lot, especially if, you, uh, if you're if you not shooting in the studio, if you're not using professional lighting, um, flash strobes and whatnot. Uh, a lot of times our eyes can end up very, very dark. Okay, So there's some tricks that we can do. In the, in the studio, a lot of portrait photographers use what's called a kicker light. Um, and it's it's kind of it's, it's almost a shaped light that they'll put underneath the subject and it kicks a little bit of light up into their eyes. That's what, hence the name kicker light. And uh, and the idea behind it is to add a little bit more life. All right. Because as the lighting's coming from the top, it tends to fade and you might have a catch light or two, but we're missing, especially because of the shape of the eye, we're missing a little bit of that light underneath there. So it does add a lot of depth and dimension to it. Once you get outside some of those things, Sometimes it's just hard to do and you'll see a lot of times whether it's going to be even with your DSLR or your cell phone photos. And I've got an example here. I'll show you. Um, it can be a little bit dark. What we're going to do here is uh, is we're going to take a look inside of Photoshop. It's my preferred way to do it, but I am going to show you inside of Lightroom. And if you use another raw editor like on one or capture one, the, the steps would actually be very similar. All right, let's go ahead and dive in here. And uh, we're going to start off with this photo. Now, I'm going to press Command or Control Plus to zoom in, zoom in a little bit further here. And what we'll do is uh, we're going to go create a brand new layer. We're going to go to the elliptical selection tool, the elliptical marquee tool. And I'm going to hold down my shift key because the eye is a circle. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to make a circle. And if you have to move it around, if you didn't get it you know, perfectly, uh, you can just use your uh, space bar key while you're still clicked and you can move this around anywhere you want. I want it to be inside of that dark outline you'll typically see. All right, so something right along those lines here. So I have my circle and about the size of the eye. You, know, you don't want it to be too big, you don't want it to be too small. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go to Edit Fill and I'm gonna choose White click OK. And now I basically just filled that with white. And if you know another way to fill with white, go ahead and use it. I'm showing you the menu way, but there are shortcuts to do it. So from here, what we want to do is, is I don't I don't just want to blast light at the eye, right? I want I want this to be shaped. So what we would do is press the up arrow key. And you can see I can nudge that selection. See how I can nudge it around. So I'm going to nudge that selection up. Once I get it to where I have a little bit of a crescent shape here, right about there, I'm going to hit the delete key. And then you can just deselect. All right. So now I've got this little crescent shape here. It could be the perfect size for what you need. Sometimes I don't get it perfect. Uh, you'd want to erase it. So if you're uh, if you're not familiar with masking, you could just grab the eraser tool and kind of just you know chip away at the edges a little bit there if you wanted to. If you're familiar with masking, of course, go ahead and use a layer mask, and that makes it more non-destructive. Either way, you want to you know you don't want it to necessarily be something that uh, encircles the entire eye here. Now from here. Because of the effect, we don't want it to be quite as harsh as this is. We want the edges to, to get a little bit softer. So what we're going to do is run a blur filter on it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And here's where, where it gets, I don't want to say it gets tricky. It's just one size doesn't fit all, all right? You want to blur it. You don't want it to be like that where you lose all detail. It just gets foggy. You don't want it to be too harsh. You want it somewhere in between, I can tell you, lower resolution photos where, you know, it's not a close up portrait or whatnot. Two, three pixels does pretty good. You know, right around three pixels works, I think, good for this photo. Higher resolution photos, you might need to change it. Okay. And I generally, you know, not more than four or five pixels um, will, will usually work for that. But it does depend a little bit on the size of the photo too. So you may need to go up higher. From there, just click OK. And so now you can see we have some nice, uh, some nice soft edges around there. And then here's where, uh, here's where we're, here's where the trick comes in. But also here is where we're going to deviate based on the photo because every photo is going to be a little bit different. And this is not one size fits all. My first, I my my first preference. And I've been doing, I've been doing this on to portrait re, for my portrait retouching for probably every bit of ten to fifteen years. My first preference is 
go change the blend mode to overlay. And you can see it pulls in a little bit of the color. It still keeps it bright. I think that works on this photo. I think that works just, just fine on this photo. If overlay is too contrasty or too saturated, try soft light. Soft light will be a little bit brighter, but a little bit more dull. It won't have as contrasty a look as overlay does. All right, I'm gonna go back to overlay. And then if that's too intense, bring your opacity down. And I don't really think it's too intense in this case. If it's not intense enough, then press Command or Control J and duplicate the layer. And you can see now you've basically just thrown one version on top of the other version because there's a blend mode, because there's a reduced opacity, they'll blend together. But I don't wanna do that on this one. I think that's a good, it's a good place to be. And then to move it over to the other side, you can just press Command or Control J, makes a copy. Use your move tool and drag it over to the other side. Of course, you would erase if it starts to uh, encroach over the eyelid or any other areas. Okay, so I'll pull back a little bit on this one and we can take a look. That's before, that's after. Subtle, but nice. Okay. All right, so that's one example. Now let's go, uh, let's go in here and take a look at a couple of other examples. Let's turn this one on. So this one, you can see automatically the photos, the, the, the portrait, the, it's a close up portrait. Face is a lot bigger, eyes are gonna be a lot bigger. So what we're gonna do here is I'll, uh, I'll make my new layer and then take my elliptical marquee tool. The eye isn't perfectly round, don't sweat that too much. You don't have to make it perfect, but I will change the shape of it based on the eye because she's kind of looking in a little bit here. Don't forget you can move it around with your spacebar key something right along those lines. Edit fill with white, and then nudge up with your arrow key up and maybe even over to the left one. Delete, and then deselect. Now in this case, I don't like the way it really kind of circles the eye here, probably shouldn't, so I would take my eraser tool or your layer mask, whatever, whatever way you feel comfortable with, and just chip away a little bit at those edges. Same thing we did before, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And in this case, because it is a higher resolution photo because her it's a closer up portrait, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock this one up a little bit, probably around four pixels, maybe even a little bit higher. Right about there. Click OK, reduce the opacity, blend it in. In this case, I don't think the blend mode worked as well. I tried it out before the blend mode didn't really do the trick. And that could really, that has a couple of things. It has to do with how colorful the eye was to begin with, how dark it is to begin with, but the, uh, the blend mode didn't work as well in this case. So I just reduced the opacity here. You can kind of see we get a, just a little bit more life. That's before and that's after, okay? I included another one just to, just to kind of show you is a cute little Bobby <laughs> and uh, it, this is not restricted. You know, this is any photo where you want to enhance the eyes. And I'm just using that same layer. I'm just going to move it up in here. And I'm going to change the blend mode. The blend mode is overlay, I think actually works really well here because there was some color. So that's before and that's after. Again, just, I know it's a dog. You know, not, you think like, hey, it's usually portraits, but you know, uh, people love their dogs. And this is a, uh, if you have a nice photo of your dog, I think this can be a, a, a nice way to enhance uh, that photo as well. And then here is an iPhone photo. It's an iPhone photo of my wife and her two sisters. And th this is not restrictive. Of course, quality in, quality out. So it's gotta be a decent quality photo. This was taken, you know, it's got portrait mode on the iPhone Plus or whatever it is, so the background's a little bit blurry. Nice even lighting on them though. But let's zoom in to, uh, to her sister here. And you can see we even have a little catch light. This had no professional lighting or whatnot, but a little catch light maybe from the sky or a light that was around. So let's do the same exact thing. Let's add a layer, shift, right about there and then edit, fill with white. Use my arrow keys, nudge it up, delete, and then just blur it a little bit. This is a lower resolution photo, so I don't think I'll have to blur it quite as much as I did before. Yeah, I don't wanna go that high. Again, knock that down, there we go. 
I still want to be able to see the shape. That's the key here is I still want to be able to see that crescent shape. So blur that a little bit. I'm going to hit take the eraser tool. Um, you know, you can see it kind of bleeds right outside of there a little bit. And then I think overlay is going to work beautifully on this because there's a lot of color in her eyes here. So that's before that's after command or control J duplicate it adds even a little bit more, maybe reduce the opacity there. And then you could always copy that one over onto the other eye as well. So that's a, you know, that's an iPhone photo, but I think it's still, uh, it still works out great for the overall picture. All right, let's hop over here to Lightroom and you could insert just about any raw editor because all of your raw editors generally have an adjustment brush of some sort. So here's what we would do. Go to your adjustment brush. We're going to zoom in, go to your adjustment brush inside of Lightroom. We happen to be fortunate under the effect menu. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a built in preset. These all numbered ones are, are my personal presets, which by the way, you can get at mattk.com. Um, but you'll see down here, there's a built in one called Iris Enhance. So go ahead and click on it and it'll show you the settings. And, and so I'll leave this up for a second. So if you're not using Lightroom, if you're using Camera Raw or On One or Capture One or any of the ones out there, any, any program with a brush, you can see here the exposure is a little bit higher. The clarity that may be structure in whatever program you're using, it could be contrast and saturation. So you'd want to kind of boost up those settings here. And so what we would do, and I'm going to accentuate exposure for a second, just because I really want you to see our brush. What we're going to do is hit the right or left bracket key, and I'm going to you know, generally get the size that I want for the eye. So right about, right about there looks pretty good. Okay. The feather setting, I'm going to make that about 10%. The feather is going to be the softness of the brush. Because we can't blur this, we need to make the brush a little bit softer from the get go. So then all we do is click. All right. And that might be still a little bit too harsh. So I'll experiment, you know, you know, take the feather, you know, reel it up to, uh, to 20%. There we go. Now I think we're starting to get in into where we want here. It's too bright. Don't worry. So now I've got my edge. Now what we're going to do is switch over to erase mode. And again, most of your brushes and your raw editors have an erase mode. Switch over to your erase mode. And in this case, you're going to put your feather again back up. Make sure auto mask is turned off, by the way. You're going to put your feather and you don't want it on when you create the brush either. And I'll even usually I'll go in here and I'll make the brush a little bit bigger. And then just hover over the part you want to delete and click because you were in erase mode, it'll take away that circle. So now we're left with that crescent shape. It's got a nice soft shape to it. Of course, we, we, we cranked up the exposure before, so we would bring that back down to earth and, uh, and get it into where we want right about there. All right. Um, and from here, a neat little trick inside a Lightroom is if you right click on top of uh, the, the little pin there, you can duplicate it and then you can move it over onto the other side. You might have to go in here and erase the edges. It might not fit perfectly, but it'd be a nice, easy way to duplicate it without redoing uh, the steps that we had before. Okay. And if you want to see what it looked like, you've got your little toggle switch down there at the bottom. That's before and that's after. Okay. I might pull that one back a little bit, but hopefully that gives you a, uh, a good handle on some things that we can do with this. You know, it is not a one size fits all, but the process is fairly pretty much the same. Um, and that's why I showed you a couple of different examples, because that way, when, when you get to your photo, you know, the first way might not work, but, but one of those methods should do the trick and hopefully that helps out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again real soon.